Is it more important to be cool or stay cool? Hey, this is Martin Taggart with Team Real Estate, and I'm sitting next to David Cordray of DNC Refrigeration Technology. That's hi, everybody. Yes, exactly. You gotta say hi, hi everybody. everybody. <laughs> so look, it's that time of the year where a lot of folks didn't invest a lot of time over the course of winter maintaining their HVAC systems, right? Out of sight, out of mind. And, it, and, if you're, and if you're lucky, you show up and they change their filter? Yeah. If you're lucky. Mm -hmm. How long do most people go between changing the filters in real life, real life? I would say realistically probably five months is the average <laughs> time. So at that point, months, the paper is full of stuff and maybe it's like blown through? Yeah. <laughs> so no, it's actually caving in at that point where <laughs> the blower motor is just sucking the filter in and it's just collapsing. <laughs> So look, um, the reason I've got David in channel with us today is because there's going to be one or more people out there who have that issue, and there's one course of uh, action that David can help you with there. But David, is it more expensive or less expensive? Is it more expensive to buy a whole new HVAC system every time you need to change the filter or just change the filter? More beneficial to change the, the filter um, because maintenance goes a long way and it will definitely prolong the life of a customer's equipment. So, and you know, equipment can last easily 10 more years just by changing filters. So let's give them your bona fides. You're not just a guy who owns an HVAC company. You're, you're just not another pretty face. <laughs> but but you, you also, you, you're also out in the community teaching this. Mm -hmm. So for what and for whom and for what and for how long? Yeah, so I've been uh, teaching at MCC Business and Technology College since 2016 and I am part-time. Um, gotten the opportunity to teach about five different classes, a couple of advanced classes and three uh, core classes. The one I started out was electricity for HVAC techs, which they learn how to wire up three phase motors for commercial applications and ECM motors and um, understand how relays work. And so I started out there and then I started teaching um, principles of heating and cooling, understanding psychrometrics, um, low calcs, stuff like that, and then, we just, then I started teaching them fundamentals of refrigeration, which they understand how the refrigeration circuit works. They get to build their own air conditioning unit to get a good idea of, of uh, what they're doing and they build confidence from there. Yeah. So, so it's just like in real estate, um, there's no reason to hire somebody who's brand new at this, and there's no reason to hire somebody who just bought a truck that says Bob's HVAC on the side. Right. When they can hire you to do the same work and you're teaching hundreds of other people how to be successful at this. Yeah. So back to the back to the cleaning part. So they they're what is what does maintenance look like in a HVAC system? Yeah. So maintenance uh, it starts with the air filter, of course. That's the that's the very most important thing you can do. Um, I always tell my customer whenever they change their air filter to write a date on their filter, and that way they can figure out an interval time of how long it takes for that filter to get loaded up before you have to change it out. Um, usually that's average three to four months, but depending on there's depending on where you live, there's other variables that can change that frequency, uh, like such as if you got animals, how many of those, do you live by a dirt road, such like that. Um, but if you just periodically check your filter with that day, you can kind of figure out your interval time, which makes it a lot easier, because some people would like to change their filter, you know, once a month and they're just wasting money because the filter doesn't even take that long to get that dirty. Yeah. So that's part of it. Um, the other thing which is crucial is uh, clean the outdoor condenser coil. If that thing gets packed with cottonwood and grass clippings and any other type of debris, it, it creates a lot of problems. First and foremost, you're going to pay a lot more energy um, cost up front, you know, upwards 20-30% easily. Uh, it's very hard on your compressor, which can break down oil viscosity, which will lead to mechanical failure later on. And so, I always tell everybody if the, the two most important things that you can do is change your air filter and wash your condenser coil. So, so when you say wash, you just mean run water down the sides? Right. Well, or is it from the inside out? Like how? Look. Usually what, you, what happens is, is you get surface dirt on the surface of the coil and you, wanna, you don't want to push that into the coil. Right. So you take a water stream and you, and you spray it downward and knock all the surface dirt off. Gotcha. Then once the surface is clean, then you're going to take the water stream directly into the coil to push any water that's inside out. Gotcha. And that's how you know you thoroughly washed it. So you start from the top, you work your way down. As the water coming out of the bottom of the coil is brown, 
you just repeat the process, work from the top all the way down to the water coming out of the bottom of the coolers clean. That's cool. So, but, but now if, if I don't want to have to learn how to do all that and make sure I do it right, obviously I can give David a call. That's right. And, and you can take it. Now, we change our, our furnace filters every month because we have two big 80-pound dogs. Mm. And we have uh, seven full-size adults that are rolling in and out of the house all the time. So we, we have a lot of airflow. And I've got um, two pin oaks in the front and uh, three pin oaks and a birch in the back. There's stuff falling off those trees all the time. Yeah. And lots yeah. of pollen in the springtime. So we stick to changing them every month. Is that too often? Like I said, it, it just depends. If you just if you periodically check it, you write a date on your filter every time you change it, and you periodically check it to find how much time it takes for that filter to get loaded up, then you can figure out, you know, maybe it may be two months. You may be able to yep. get away with two months. You may get away with, at my house, I can get away with six months. So it just depends. You just, but periodically check it to make sure how fast what's the interval time for loading up the filter okay yeah right. uh, the other thing is as far as the pm preventive maintenance goes um what what we normally do as a technician is we do the mechanical and electrical inspection the electrical inspection consists of making sure wires aren't burning uh, from discoloration of the insulation on the wire itself making sure that wires aren't touching something that that could cause a breach in the insulation and then form a short to ground uh, those are the primary things that you would look at as far as electrical. Uh, mechanical, it's checking the refrigerant charge, making sure that's in good shape, making sure copper to copper is not rubbing the forward breach where we can leak out refrigerant mm -hmm. later, checking the bearings and fan motors, um, checking the overall operation of the compressor to make sure it's, it's in good shape by taking amp draw, um, compression ratios, Things like that. So, so preventative maintenance checkup in the spring or the fall is going to run a couple hundred bucks. Well, for me, I charge sixty bucks uh, for a fall startup. With the fall startup, I clean your flame sensor, check your gas pressure, do a carbon dioxide test, check the heat exchanger. Again, electrical, mechanical inspection, mm -hmm. and then in the springtime, it's sixty dollars to do the uh, spring startup. Make sure your AC is tuned up and ready to go for the summer, so you don't have any issues and you have peace of mind. So, so you could spend $60, or if you're feeling lucky, you could just do none of that and spend $7,500, $8,000, cause you like new stuff. Crazy as it sounds, most of the time, 85 to 90% of service calls is because of lack of maintenance. And usually if it gets really bad, then it gets to the point where you've done so much damage that yeah, now you have to replace your equipment. So if you're in channel today and you're listening to David uh, and you've got questions for David, you'll be able to post those questions down below and he'll get, we'll get a hold of David and make sure that he answers those. If you are thinking about getting a hold of David because you're like me and you want to have the maintenance done because I don't want to buy a new unit if I don't have to, how would people get a hold of you, David? They can definitely text me on my phone. Um, I, you call me old school way. I like, you know, I like hearing from customers. So we'll put the contact phone. information down below, but you still got to tell them like, what's the number? So it's 816-729-0739. You can also get a hold of me, uh, through my website, um, uh, which is DNC refrigeration mo.com as well as Facebook. And I have, um, so I, I put up about a post for customers and give them free advice on what they could do. That's awesome. So we'll be taking a look at some of those tips and transferring over to our team page as well. Make sure it's easier for you to find David. Any, any last minute stuff? Like, are there any questions that, that people ask repeatedly that you would just want to hand out to everybody in channel all at once? So don't assume that your air conditioning unit needs Freon. That's the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, usually, like I said, usually it's just uh, it's tech, tech the basics. So um, as far as questions, I, I'll address them as they come. Uh, usually you want to check your thermostats, batteries, and see if they're in good shape. You know, check the breakers to make sure they're on and not tripped from like a, a storm previously happened. Um, you know, check your air filter, make sure your condenser coil is clean, such like that. Uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Do you have any other questions? Just can give me a shout. David is a tremendous resource. You will truly enjoy having him in your home. So, Absolutely. Hey, remember, life is better with the team. <laughs> have an awesome day and uh, get in touch with David. For sure. Thank you, guys.